Oh, okay, so is this... So She brought her family with her. 
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Sarasota, Florida. It's great having you here in person and also those of you who are watching on your devices. Welcome to this Pentecost Day as we celebrate in red and wonderful way to celebrate. Many of you remembered to wear red. Great job. A uh, special welcome to our guests. If you are a first time guest, make sure we um, get you a welcome bag on your way in or on your way out. And please um, fill out the welcome card in front of you in the pew um, so we can personally welcome you here. Uh, it is also Memorial Day weekend, and so we give thanks for those lives who served our country and gave all. And in observance of Memorial Day, our office is closed tomorrow. Um, but we'll be back open on Tuesday. Uh, today, we're going to be recognizing our returning new member, Christina Danielowitz, and that'll be um, partway through the service. Yes, applause now is appropriate. And we will have, uh, there's also fellowship time after worship today too. So welcome, Christina. And um, she'll also be sharing a testimony um, after um, we welcome her officially. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, we will, we do have a few birthdays that we'd like to recognize um, this week. Today is Stella Reynolds, one of the um, babies that we baptized here. So Stella's birthday. And Kendall Riley, um, one of our youth, just I believe graduated fifth grade. Uh, so um, happy birthday to both of them. And also, today is also with Pentecost, so it's the birthday of the church. And so it's very appropriate for us to sing happy birthday to the church as well. So John, let us start us in our happy birthday. Our community meals served 43 meals or 43 guests and 83 meals on Tuesday and food pantry served 62 families so thank you all for continuing to support these ministries and volunteer and um, we thank you so much for doing that they are a big part of our ministry and uh, very much needed in our community on Thursday, we will be interring Bonnie Zipp's ashes into our memorial garden at 1 p.m. So we've already celebrated her life in the church soon after she passed, but we're going to um, inter her. So all are welcome to attend. It's a very brief service, um, maybe about 10 minutes, um, but you're all welcome. Um, that's Thursday at 1 p.m. in the memorial garden. Uh, next Sunday, is my last Sunday until August 6th. And hopefully you all know I'm taking a renewal leave sabbatical and so Pastor Don will be here and you'll be in wonderful hands. He's already taken his little break, that's why he's not here today. Um, he's taken his little vacation out of town and so he'll be ready to go um, and so next Sunday will be my last until August 6th. Um, and also during the summer, John Ferreira, our Making Joyful Noise vlog, will take a little break too. So um, we both are getting a little break from, he gets less of a break. He just doesn't have to do his vlog for the month, for the week, but um, he'll still be here for music. So I know Rick's not here, but I do have a joke that's been kind of going around the congregation. I've heard already a little bit. So um, I want to share it. Hopefully I... I'm not good at telling jokes, but we'll try. So there's a, a woman who died, went to the heavenly gates, and met St. Peter, and he said to her, yes, you're welcome in, but you have to spell a word correctly the first time and to get in. And she's like, well, well what's the word? And he said, love. She's like, oh, okay, that's easy, L-O-V-E. Okay, you're welcome in. But St. Peter needed to leave for a little while, so he asked her to 
stay and basically welcome everybody in and do the same thing, that they have to spell a word. And then, so that the first person that came up to the heavenly gates was this woman's husband. She was shocked to see him. Why are you here? You, and he just said, yeah, I know, we just celebrated your life and then the funeral and then there's a car accident on my way home. And so I'm here. And she's like, okay, well, I am the one at the gate right now. St. Peter had to leave for a bit. And so what it what says is you can come in, but you have to spell one word correctly. And you have to spell it correctly the first time. And he's like, well, well okay, well, what's the word? Czechoslovakia. <laughs> so that's my joke in, instead of Rick's. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude from some of our St. Paul ringers. Please rise as you're able for our gathering hymn, Spirit of Gentleness.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing verse 3 of our hymn of praise. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the wellspring of everlasting. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for water that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of praise, verses 1, 4, and 5 of O Sing to the Lord. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. 
O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for special music from our St. Paul singers. This will be the last time they'll be singing as our St. Paul singers until September as well. There will still be times to sing in a choir though. So keep eyes open for when you can just come and sing. Um, rehearsal will be right away just in the morning. So we'll let them sing now. Choir. We continue with our scripture readings for this Pentecost. Thank you, Irene, for being our scripture reader today. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, 
Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall, shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading is from Psalm 104. We will read it responsibly by verse. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. It's full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go to the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them go to you to give them their own you give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever, O Lord, rejoicing all you look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Psalm 104. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Our third reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophesy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ, for in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, 
Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Before the gospel acclamation, I'd like to be able to talk to everybody, including Harper, um, for our children's message. And so I want to share what's in my, at my, my stall. Can you see this, Harper? So can you see what's here? Can you see what that looks like? Does it look like a bird? Yeah. That's a bird. And it's a special kind of bird. It's called a dove. Yeah, you want to go sit up there? Okay, let's, let's sit right here. Let's sit on the stairs. Yeah, sit right there. So we have, and then you can see it even better. So this dove, and if you look around, if you look behind you, do you see another one on the altar, on that table there? That's another bird. It's a dove. Oh, yeah, you see a rainbow color there. That's special for somebody else. Yeah, we like rainbows, don't we? They're my favorite. So today, we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Can you say that, Holy Spirit? Good job. Those are big words. You got it. And so this bird symbolizes the Holy Spirit. So when this dove comes down and we have becomes the birthday of the church. You love birthday parties. Yep. Yeah? So that's kind of what today is. Oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. That's always good. So we have the birthday of the church today. So we sang happy birthday already to the church. But this dove shows not only the birthday of the church, but the baptism of the church. Because when, the, the, when we're baptized, the Holy Spirit comes in us. And so that's what we remember today. It's not only the birthday, but it's the baptism of our church. And so I want, do you remember? We know we say we have Jesus in our hearts. And when the Holy Spirit helps us do all the things that we like to do, that are good things to do. What are, what's your favorite thing to do to help somebody? Run really fast? We're not going to run really fast right now. When, when we're done with church, we can run really fast. Yeah, afterward. Because we won't be able to catch you, because you're going to be the fastest runner in here. Your fast shoes? Yeah, you're right. And that's how the, the, the Holy Spirit runs really fast because it's got to keep up with you, and the Holy Spirit will. And so I want us to say a prayer. So can you fold your hands? And you're going to say, say what I say, okay? Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit, good job, is in me. Thank you. Help me to always listen to it and tell everyone that the Spirit loves them too. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes. Good job. Good job. Now you can run back to your seat after you get down the stairs. There you go. <laughs> like I said, the Holy Spirit's got to run fast. <laughs> so we rise as you are able for the gospel acclamation. according to St. John, the 20th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked in fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Happy Pentecost. Today is the day we celebrate the birthday or the baptism of the church as we know it. But really, Pentecost was originally a Jewish holiday. As one scholar wrote, it shouldn't be a surprise because Christianity began amongst Jewish people. The festival of weeks occurs seven weeks after Passover and begins on the 50th day after. Hence the Greek name Pentecost, meaning 50. We've incorporated the idea to 50 days after Easter. Today is that 50th day. So we can stop counting to 50. We've been doing that a lot. The original Jewish Pentecost is one of the three festivals for which some Jewish people would make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. All these people from all over came to Jerusalem. All of these areas named in the reading from Acts often don't mean much to us now. But if we name them by their current names, I think we can get a better idea. One of my seminary classmates did this and shared it so others could use it. Our story could be read like this. Amazed and astonished, they asked, aren't all of these people from the same place in Galilee? How can they be talking in so many languages at once? We are from Afghanistan and Turkmenistan, Iran and Iraq, Israel and Palestine, and many parts of Turkey, including near Istanbul and Ankara. Some of us are from Egypt and northern Libya, or visiting from Rome and Italy from the island of Crete, or from Saudi Arabia. But still, we hear the apostles speaking about God's deeds of power in our own languages. The connection between the original Jewish Pentecost and what Christians know of it today continue, as the Jewish Pentecost is a harvest festival, where families bring the first fruits of their harvest in anticipation of God's blessing of the remainder of the harvest. This made Pentecost already symbolically rich for imagining the beginning of a bountiful ingathering. But in Acts' case, what was reaped was not produce, but people. Pentecost's rich symbolism was also connected to it being the day that commemorated the Israelites receiving the Torah or law. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit appeared through images of fire, clouds, and loud noises, similar to the theophany or manifestation when God gave the Torah at Sinai. There's another connection to the Old Testament that I like with our Gospel reading today. But first, our Gospel reading comes with a disclaimer. It starts out by saying, when it was evening, on that day of Jesus' resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them. I don't like that language of the fear of the Jews. Like every Jewish person was out to get the disciples. Like every Jewish person was a Christ killer. That's an overgeneralization that can get us into trouble. The disciples were Jewish. I don't think they meant they were afraid of themselves. Well, I believe most of us don't think every Jewish person is bad. There are people who have used our Bible and our scriptures like this to enact violence and hate on our Jewish brothers and sisters. It is our responsibility to speak up against that misinterpretation of our scriptures. We even go as far as to say that Jewish people do not need to be converted 
to Christianity because they have the first promise of God. Christians were just grafted into that, that original promise, just like the Jewish Pentecost was used to form the Christian church. End of the disclaimer, and back to the connection of our gospel reading to the Old Testament. Jesus said to the disciples in the locked room, receive the Holy Spirit. As he was saying this, he breathed upon them. It's like from Genesis when God created humans and breathed life into them. And in Ezekiel when the dry bones were given life through breath. That same life-giving breath that was used throughout the centuries was used again to bring life to this community of faith. One scholar coined the term stifled breath. It's like when we can't give full throated voice to who we are or holding our breath to see what happens next, there is no life in that living. It's separated and fearful and distorted. The disciples were stifled in that room holding their breath and Jesus entered and breathed on them. He gave them a double portion of peace, a peace that first calms their fears and then the peace of the Holy Spirit that can embolden them into a forming a new community of faith. This double portion of peace is for you too. That's what Pentecost is all about. This is a day the church celebrates, as one scholar wrote, not just looking back to when the church was born, but it is a time of confidence and hope and looking forward. That same spirit poured upon the people gathered there is now pouring out upon us now. The spirit given at Pentecost breathed the disciples throughout the ages, ages and ages, and now including us. This is the end of the Easter season. That Easter season was all about the activity of God in Jesus Christ. Now we are given the spirit so that we can continue on the Easter story using our gifts, all given by the same Spirit, all for the common good. Thanks be to God. We always have a reflection question for the week to think about during, and also during Sunday school after worship. So this week's question is, what does Pentecost mean to you? And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, O Day Full of Grace, verses 1, 4, and alternate 4.
this is a time where we will receive our new member, Christina Danielwitz. If you do want to come forward, you're welcome to. Yeah, we can have even just come up here. And we have our, Marilyn is the sponsor, and, and we always try to have a, somebody that knows her and been a part of the church so that she can have always a person to, if she's got questions, um, she can always reach out to. So, dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for Christina Danielwitz one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as a member into the life and ministry of this congregation. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister, whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promise of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so this is for everybody. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. Reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If, all, if so, answer together, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, mighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ, sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God, and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus Christ, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Christina, sister in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Christina in her life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you, oh thanks, oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Christ. Christina, the gift of your Holy Spirit, to the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence. We give you thanks for Christina, whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ, and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of the bread and the prayers and in service to others. Amen. Let us welcome Christina, our sister in Christ, to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. It is appropriate to give. We do have a gift of welcome. And you also have a mailbox, and I think there's probably some things in there too. 
And so you are welcome to give a testimony. It's always nice to have a testimony on Pentecost, to where the Spirit is working in people's lives. And Christina wanted to share that with you today. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to take a few moments of your time this morning to share my testimony with you. However, before I begin, I feel it's necessary to preface it because my story is super complicated, spanning a couple of decades, which requires a bit more detail and explanation than what we have time for today. So today I'll just be giving you the brief version, but perhaps I'll write a book or something later on about the long version. We'll see what happens. Um, I came to know Jesus when I was young because my parents were not churchgoers, but they did at least believe in God. Um, they taught my sister and I to pray as soon as we could talk, um, but they divorced when I was about two, and after that they didn't send us to church or teach us the word of God. So I grew up knowing God well enough to have a conversation with him, but I didn't know his word and was not able to discern his will for my life. Um, this lack of knowledge led me to seek answers to life's questions from things like psychics and horoscopes. I won't go into too much detail about that today, but as you can imagine, the answers I got from those things weren't the truth, and they planted seeds in my heart and mind that destroyed my life as I knew it and caused me to walk in darkness for many years. To be sure, seeking anything from these people and things was just a slippery slope that eventually led into occult practices and belief systems. My spiritual wandering caused my family members and friends to distance themselves from me. Truly, I burned almost every bridge I had ever built. I responded to that distancing by lashing out with rage and rebellion. Truthfully, I became a person that even I didn't know and that no one respected. Recently, Jesus appeared to me in visions and spoke to me. He let me know that what I was doing was wrong, and he told me that I had been walking in darkness, taking his mercy for granted, and that I was at a crossroads. He told me that I needed to make a choice, his way or mine, but that mine would not lead to heaven. He also told me that he loves me, forgives all of my sins, and that he wants me in heaven with him always. Since then, I've been spending time with Jesus and have truly fallen in love with him. I stand before you today to let you know that I know that Jesus loves me more than I could have ever imagined and that he is helping me to change my life. I also believe he wants me to give you a message as well. He wants me to tell you that no matter where you are on your journey of faith, he is with you and that he loves you. Just like me, he doesn't want any of you to fall into the traps of psychics or occult practices no matter how Christian-like they may seem to you. Jesus wants you to turn to him only, regardless of what you may have done in life, what you're going through now, or where you are in your spiritual walk. He loves you all and wants each and every one of you with him in heaven always. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Christina. We will continue with the prayers of the church, but as we enter into our time of prayer, we will first sing, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless the nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort. Be especially with those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer chain for the names listed in our bulletin this morning, for the prayers upon the community prayer cross, for healthcare workers and law enforcement officers, for Ukraine, for those suffering from natural or human-made disasters, for St. Paul members, especially Sandy Chiquette, Jennifer, Pam, and Pat Collis, Missy Craig, and Christina Danielwitz, for our preschool teachers and students. Hear us, God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our sin and community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. And as we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where there is more. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And we continue with the song, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time to share God's peace with one another as we turn our hands into hearts. We won't pass the offering plates around the pews. They, the offering plates Plates are available to you as you leave or as you enter our sanctuary. We also have online giving through our website, especially for those of you who watch on your devices. And this is a time where our offerings will be brought forward by our ushers.
and we'll continue with our offering prayer. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth and the breaking of this bread. Reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is our practice to have a spiritual communion prayer for those of you who are watching on your devices and cannot physically eat of Jesus' body and blood. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Continue with the Holy Communion Liturgy for those of us in person. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptations of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire as on the day of Pentecost. For those of you who'd like communion at your seats, please lift up your elements for blessing and consecration. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks here for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his death and resurrection and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray as we sing and Susie signs the Lord's Prayer. Come and know Christ, poured out and broken for you. Thanks be to God. For those who wish to remain at their seats and take Holy Communion, this is a time to take your host wafer, that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And then the wine or the juice, the blood of Christ, shed for you, take and drink. And we will continue with the singing of spirit song as the assistants um, take communion. And then we'll come forward by the usher's instruction with the choir leading.
Is there anybody that would like Holy Communion at their seats? Yes. Please rise as you are able. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And receive the blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Our sending him today is Holy Spirit ever dwelling.
Go in, per- in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. And bow down to and say,